When you learned about the rock cycle, you learned that the Earth's crust or lithosphere is constantly changing. In this unit of study, the dynamic crust and plate tectonics, you'll learn that uh, the inside of the Earth is also constantly changing. The outward effect of this is earthquakes. These occur in the Earth's crust and inside the Earth when stresses that are built up are re released when rock actually breaks. Um, the, the plates of the Earth are like jig big jigsaw puzzles um, that some of the continents are on underneath the ocean, and they're constantly moving around due to heat differences inside planet Earth. Where they actually meet or rub together are called faults, and these are the zones where the earthquakes occur. And once that uh, energy is released, it radiates in all directions. The epicenter is the area on the surface of the earth right above where the earthquake occurred. Where the earthquake actually occurs is called the focus. Seismologists use a tool called a seismograph and basically it's, you know, very simply explained, it's a pen or pencil that's drawing on a rotating drum of paper. And when the earth shakes, that drum shakes back and forth. And it basically records how much shaking was going on. The more shaking, the more magnitude. All right, so that's a good vocabulary. A strong earthquake has a high magnitude. And you can look in your review book for a nice picture of a seismograph. Now we talked a little bit about primary and secondary waves. So this should be pretty familiar to you. All right. These travel the fastest. All right. And since it's a, it's a P wave primary, you can also think of push-pull. All right. It's like a giant slinky that's um, contracting and then expanding, contracting and expanding. All right. And P waves can travel through all materials. This will be a little bit more important and make a little more sense in a few minutes. All right. But they travel the fastest. <clears throat> S waves are the secondary waves. You can remember S secondary or S slow. All right. They're side to side or shear waves. And this makes it so they only travel through solids. They do not travel through liquids. All right. So another thing to remember, S equals S. Secondary or S waves go through solids. Now we started working on this a little bit, locating the epicenters. Basically has to do with figuring out the difference between P and S wave arrival times. Very similar to figuring out how close you are to a thunderstorm, right? The difference between the, the lightning and the thunder, okay? So the closer in minutes and seconds the P and S waves are, the closer you are to the epicenter. And conversely, the, far, the bigger time between P and S waves the farther you away f are away from the epicenter. So my question here is, if the P and S waves occur at exactly the same time, where are you located? I want you to consider that question. This is my tutorial for page 11 in your reference table. I have page 11 up here and I have a piece of scrap paper that I'm going to use. Those are the tools that you should have. A sharp pencil would be a very good tool to have as well. The first one we're going to talk about is I'm going to talk about figuring out how far an earthquake is away if the difference between P and S wave travel times is three minutes. So I'm going to bring my piece of scrap paper over and you'll notice that I'm leaving the um, I'm leaving the numbers visible okay so I have the scrap paper over to the right a little bit okay and I'm gonna make a nice careful mark at zero and three that's that's important and then to just group these really quickly here 
Okay. Now I just drag my I drag my scrap paper up until they are those two marks are right on the lines for the PNS waves, right? Like it's a little hard to do it very detailed here, but it looks like it's just about there. Okay. This is also where you'll see that making these lines that I indicated in red, it's very important to make them very um, neat and exact. Okay. Then we basically just follow this right down to where it intersects down here at the distance, at the distance to the epicenter. So now I can move my paper away, and we see it's right here. This right here would be uh, 1.8 times 10 to the third, which would be 1,800 kilometers. Okay, so we would say that if the dis difference between the P and S waves is three minutes, it would be 1,800 kilometers from the epicenter. Okay, let's do one more of these examples. I'm just going to erase some of these marks over here and record these ones up here. So let's talk about four minutes and 20 seconds. This is a good opportunity for me to talk about over here on the left side over here, right over here. These, uh, the numbers are minutes. There's lines in between each, between each number. Each of those lines is worth 20 seconds. And I encourage you to write that down in your reference table to help you remember. So we put our uh, piece of scrap paper over here. Line it up. Okay. Then we'll do this one in blue. Nice and carefully. Zero. And four minutes and 20 seconds. Okay. While you're doing that nice and neatly, I'm just going to group this here. Okay. Then we just slide this up. Okay. We'll slide that up. Now, I like this because what I what I encourage you to do is just is just follow the edge of the paper down like this until it reaches the bottom. Okay? And you can see clearly that that there is 3000 kilometers. Okay? Now let's talk a little bit about, about this detail. If, if the um, earthquake is 3,000 kilometers away, all right, I can actually just move this up here. If this earthquake is 3,000 kilometers away, all right, that means that it took the P wave, we would look right here, the P wave, it took five minutes, P wave, travel time, five minutes and 40 seconds, all right, doing the same thing, we go up to here for the S wave, we would go across, that would be 10 minutes. And that's a general overview of how to use page 10. There's other ways that this uh, would be sort of done, um, sort of uh, like if they gave you the P wave travel times, you'd have to go backwards. But this is the general way to use this chart on page 11. I want to show you here how to use the um, safety compass and the map on our lab. Okay, the first thing you want to do is you want to remember that the safety compass, the center right here where my left index finger is, that goes on zero. So you want to just put that right on zero, just hold it down. Okay, then you move this out. So um, in the last example, we found um, one of the, one of the um, PNS wave charts was 1,800 kilometers, so... We'll go, now I'm using my sharp pencil, I'll show you. So this, this circle right here 
is going to be at a radius of 1800 kilometers. So if we just say, <clears throat> oh, and by the way, you got to tighten this blue knob here. If you want to just say that uh, a radius of, one, of 1800 kilometers around Denver, we would just go like this now. Sometimes it's helpful to actually move the paper. Okay. You'll do that for each of the each of the examples. Okay. So right now we're not sure basically where the epicenter is, but we know that it's somewhere 1800 kilometers away. This may or may not be the exact numbers for um, this map in your lab, so don't get confused, but this was just an example of how to set up the compass and draw the circle around a location.